Okay, picking up where we left off from your introduction to Eugene, I want to show you now how to align the GFP original sequence, that is the GFP sequence before it was subject to random mutagenesis, and your sequencing data from GeneWiz, that is the sequence of your mutated GFP. So the first thing that we see here is the original sequence. By the way, you simply upload these by going to File, Open, and finding the place on your computer where you stored them. You're going to have to download your sequences from Blackboard. But I've already done that. So GFP original sequence. So what do we have here? Well, we have the exact sequence of GFP starting from ATG. Let me scroll up here so you can see the whole thing. That's a start codon that codes for methionine and going all the way to TAA, which is a stop codon, which is the end of our GFP protein. Now we can't currently see the amino acids, but I can actually fix that by going here and picking show hide amino translation. I'm going to choose setup frames manually and go for frame one only. And look what we have. We have the GFP amino acid sequence relative to the nucleotide sequence. So uh, the nucleotide sequence is 717 uh, base pairs, and I believe the GFP is 274 amino acids. We could do the math by dividing our DNA sequence by three, but 274 is close enough for the time being. So now we have two things, three things actually. We have the chromatogram that you saw before. We'll take a quick look at that and see same thing that we saw before. The beginning and the end has less good sequencing data, but the middle parts are looking really good. And it's a nice long sequence. It goes all the way to almost 1,100 base pairs. So this is more than going to cover our GFP, which is good. So in order to do the alignment, we're going to use the .seq file. And we use that because it's simply the nucleotide bases. That's all we need. And so I'm going to select that. It's actually already selected. And then I'm going to hit Control, select the original sequence as well. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Export Sequences as Alignment. Uh, I'm not going to rename. I'm just going to hit Export. Look, we have the two of them together. However, Eugene can be a little tricky. They're not, in fact, aligned yet. What do we have to do? We have to right click again, go to align, and choose align with muscle. This is an alignment program that Eugene interfaces with. No need to change parameters. Hit align again. Wait a moment. Wait two moments. And voila, we have an alignment. So notice that your, ah, uh, ooh, that's interesting, your mutant sequence is on top and your original GFP sequence is on the bottom. We can actually switch, well, we can't switch them around yet, but we can in a moment. So what I would like to do is um, first trim this sequence. So keeping in mind that this is our GFP gene starting here, our original GFP gene, I'm going to select here, scroll backwards, or try to. Sometimes this is a little bit stubborn. You have to give it a few tries. Try again here. Here we go. So I'm going to select all this and hit delete. Now we're all lined up at the start codon. I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. This TAA is the stop codon, so I'm going to select from here. I'm going to scroll all the way to the end, which is going to take a while because there's over a thousand base pairs of this of the mutagenized sequence. And when we get there, I'm going to hit delete again so we can get rid of all this as well. Delete. Okay, now we can do some cool stuff. I'm going to set our original GFP sequence as our reference sequence. So I right click on it, set this sequence as reference, and I'm actually going to put it on top. 
I prefer having it up there. And now we can look for the places where we have changes. So somewhere in here, I'm wagering we're going to have a nucleotide change. And lo and behold, at 242, we have an alanine, sorry, not an alanine, an adenine to a guanine, an A to a G. Scroll on down, see if we have any other changes. Yes, at position 684, we have a G to a T. Now we want to know, how does this stack up, as it were, when we're talking about amino acid changes? So we have another handy tool here. We know we have two mutations, but we don't know what changes they're going to lead to in the primary sequence. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to export amino translation. Export. So again, I'm going to set this as our reference sequence. And you're going to see that we have a change here at position 81 from a histidine to an arginine. Scrolling on down, it does not appear that we have any other changes, so that second mutation must have been a silent mutation. Okay, I'm going to stop here. There's more to come, but this should suffice for now to get you to going with performing your own alignment and figuring out where your mutations are.